I don't remember. I haven't been a while. Would you sign it for me? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we have a house up at Lake Mead. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want to call it, it's fine. Well, I'll, it's just whatever they, a possibility of that, yeah. But I'm sure that he won't be talking because John don't like. No. I'm sure he'll have to say Jack. The Guardian of the Cave is more in contact with the event. what that means. Talking about what? Cemetery. Cemetery? Oh, is there a study session next week? Yeah, well, study session next week. No. Not surprised. Most of the cemetery people don't want to be cemetery people no more. We're late. Are we ready? So we're looking for oh, yeah. the town to take it over. Maybe. Why not? You don't like that idea. Look at your face. Where's your dad, Bert? I'd like to call the meeting to order. Would you please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. May we have a roll call, please? Certainly may. Good evening, everyone. Okay. Um, Council Member Kelly. Present. Council Member Turner. Here. Council Member Perkins. Here. Council Member Mendoza. Here. Council Member Best. Here. Vice Mayor Miller. Here. And Mayor Croft. Here. Thank you. Introductions, presentations, and proclamation. Uh, the first one is proclamation declaring May 24, 25, 2019 as Poppy Days, sponsored by the American Legion Auxiliary. Okay, American Legion Auxiliary, come on up front. We'll read the proclamation. <laughs> <laughs> this is almost like being in the military, you know. You, yeah, you guys are hard. All right, proclamation, Pop Poppy Days, May 24, 25, 2019. Whereas America is the land of freedom, preserved and protected willingly and freely by citizen soldiers, and whereas millions who have answered the call to arms have died on the field of battle, and whereas a nation at peace must be reminded of the price of war and the debt owed to those who have died in war, and whereas the red poppy has been designated as a symbol of sacrifice of <coughs> lies in all wars, and whereas the American Legion Auxiliary has pledged to remind America annually of this debt through the distribution of memorial flowers. And now, therefore, I, Darrell Croft, Mayor of the Town of Chino Valley, do hereby proclaim May 24th, 25th, 2019, as Poppy Days in Chino Valley, Arizona, and ask that all citizens pay tribute to those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in the name of freedom by wearing the memorial poppy on this day. Anyway, thank you very much, and we appreciate all the help. This poppy is our biggest fundraiser for the vets. Thank you. And where are you going to start distributing the, the poppy? Uh, we're doing it at uh, Ace, mm -hmm. Walgreens, the bank, on, uh, Credit Union on Friday, and Phillips. And oh, okay. Great. All over town. All right. Thank you very much.
I don't have it up, but I'll give me a. Oh, just the action item? Where the heck is Proclamation. Go. Regarding Memorial Day. Go. Go. To the vice mayor. I don't care. Uh, item B, proclamation regarding, regarding Memorial Day and the National Monument of Remembrance on May 27, 2019. Thank you very much. 15. Okay, that's right. Tom, get up here. I thought you were going up there. Greg, I could you too. Mm -hmm. I thought you left the board. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So I thought, man, I didn't know you was a bear. <laughs> Morning, Craig. How are you? How are you, Vice Mayor? Good. Proclamation, Memorial Day, May 27, 2019. Whereas it is essential to remember and renew the legacy of Memorial Day, which was established in 1868 to pay tribute to the individuals who have made the ultimate sacrifice in service of the United States and their families. And whereas on Memorial Day, we pause in solemn gratitude to pay tribute to the brave men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice on our behalf and laid down their lives depending on peace and freedom while in military service to our great nation. The fallen deserve nothing less from a grateful nation and whereas we remember them in thankfulness and unwavering pride and we are humble because we remember that the wealth of this nation her nation's heritage, the strength of the ideals and the extent of its freedom come at expense of American lives, a cost borne predominantly from the several generations whose bright futures, hopes, and dreams were sacrificed for the abundance of opportunities we now freely pursue. Now, therefore, I, Darrell Croft, Mayor of the Town of Chino Valley, encourage all citizens to designate the minute beginning at 3 p.m. local time on May 27, 2019, as a time for all Americans to observe the national moment of remembrance as passed by the United States States uh, Public Law 106.579, and to remember, we must safeguard the legacies of our service members so that our children and our grandchildren will understand the sacrifices of our armed forces. And as you see, all these folks here have served. They could be something that we're holding a memorial for today because they put their lives on the line to be out there with the rest of the service. And thank you very much for your service. Thank you very much. Item C, presentation to the town by Tim Pratter of a flag certificate from the Sons of America Revolution, uh, Rev Revolution Prescott chapter. Tim, come on up here. <coughs> Get back down there. Now I gotta go back down there. <laughs> <laughs> I would have read it, had you. I was ready that time. <laughs> hey. of Chino Valley for now, about 10 years. I went through the Citizens <coughs> Academy and I met, I met the board, I met so many people that work for the city of Chino Valley and I just wanna tell you that I, I commend every single one of you for what, what you do. Uh, I'm also a member of the Sons of the American Revolution. I had a grandfather who fought the American Revolutionary War. 
And what I realized is that um, I can say for me, perhaps for the mayor, that, that we really <coughs> are here on the shoulders of our ancestors. Uh, th they, they did it all so we could be here today trying to make a difference in the city of Chino Valley. Uh, I want to read the certificate, then I'll made, make one last comment. Uh, this certificate of, of accommodation is presented to the town of Chino Valley in recognition of exemplary <coughs> patriotism in the display of the flag of the United States of America. A and that can be kind of a simple thing. You think, well, there's a flag and it's flying out there, but yes, that flag, those stars can represent uh, the, the states of the Union. They can represent soldiers that fought but having gone through that academy, I just want to say that uh, whether it's the Chamber of Commerce, uh, whether it's the mayor and the council, uh, fire department, police department, teachers, uh, they're the fabric of America. And that flag represents that to me today. So that's my two cents worth. I was ready that time too. Are you ready? Go do the no, next one. No, no. Do the I'm next one. Waited. It's over now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go to D. Report by Laurette Bershur, <coughs> Director, Chino Valley Air Chamber of Commerce, regarding the recent Chino Valley job fair. Get a step ladder for her. I know. <laughs> oh, that looks cool. Good evening, Mayor and Town Council. We're here today to give you a little bit of an update on the Chino Valley Job Fair. With me today is Katherine Anderson of Yavapai College. So I will turn the mic over to her. Good evening, and, and thank Hi. you for letting me come tonight with Lorette to give you a little update. She's over here now. <laughs> uh, we just wanted to give you some numbers uh, from the Job Fair just so you have an idea of the difference we are making in your community. Uh, the job fair was back in February. Uh, we had 55 businesses that attended and 231 registered job seekers that were there. And we say registered because we do try to keep track of the numbers that come in the door, but there's always a few that sneak in that we're not aware of or that do not want to register. Uh, that day, we know of seven reported hires. And again, we say reported <coughs> because those are the ones that we know about. We try to follow up and keep track after the fact, but it's very hard to find out from the companies as the hiring process can take months. It's not a matter of turning in your application today and you're hired tomorrow. For some of them, it can be 30, 60 days, but we do know that day of seven people that got a job as a result of the job fair. Uh, we do receive a lot of support from the town of Chino Valley, and we're very thankful. We already have a date planned for next year, so we do look forward to coming back out here and working with you guys again. Uh, do you have any questions about the job fairs? Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank if you. If you can hire one of our citizens, that's enough. So well, we look you. forward to hiring more. Good, good. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, e presentation regarding a request for funding for the Yavapai County Advocacy Center, Chuck Wynn, Police Chief. You're always asking for money for something. <laughs> no, sir, she's asking for money. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm gonna let Missy do most of the talking. Um, she's with YFAC, and for those you don't know, they provide a numerous amount of services for the public and the police department. They do sane exams on sexual assault victims, they do forensic interviewing for us, they provide a number of counseling services for victims of different crimes, but I'll let Missy explain better because she does a way better job than I do. All right. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank Good you evening. for um, letting me come and present. Um, as Chief Wynn said, the Avapai Family Advocacy Center provides services to all victims of what we call interpersonal crime. 
That's um, child abuse, sexual assault, domestic violence, sex trafficking, elder abuse, stalking. Um, and about 70 to 75% of our referrals come to us through law enforcement agencies all over Yavapai County. The rest of the um, clients that come to our center can come to us, they can self-refer to us or they may come through the Department of Child Safety or Adult Protective Services. Um, we provide a number of services including advocacy, which is accompaniment to court, um, safety planning for somebody who's leaving a dangerous situation, um, referrals for housing, food, all those types of things. Um, we help with uh, getting identification. Sometimes um, victims will leave their abuser and they will um, not have their, their identification with them because that may have been withheld. Um, we support children and their caregivers who have been abused, so we provide trauma-informed therapy services to those children. Um, as Chief Wynn said, forensic interviews, which we know nationally is best practice when you're talking to a child who's been a victim of a crime. It's best that they are able to tell that story in a very friendly, family-centered environment and um, to a person who's specially trained to talk to kids about the bad things that have happened to them. Um, we also provide legal services to um, our victims, so they have um, legal advice or even legal representation when they go to court to file for custody orders and protect their children from the abusive parent. We have um, all sexual assault exams on children and adults for the whole county are performed at our center. Uh, that's through the direction of the county attorney. We're really excited because historically, since our doors opened in 2000, we had really only one provider, and that person was able to do exams evenings and weekends. So we were having victims wait, or we were helping transport them out of our area. As of October 1st of 2018, we now have five providers. Cool. So we have entered into a partnership with Honor Health, and we are able to perform those exams around the clock, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Um, our doors are open during bi regular business hours, but we are available um, around the clock. We have on-call staff that are available to come in. Everything that is provided to victims that come through our doors is free of, free of charge to the victim. We are a nonprofit, and we're a project of Prevent Child Abuse Arizona. Becky Ruffner is here with me, the executive director. Um, and we uh, are funded through federal and state grants. Um, private grants, and then um, since our doors have opened, we've been funded through um, through the local jurisdictions, through each town or the county has provided money to us. We also, in the past, have always received money from PANT, and that has been um, racketeering money that has been collected through cash seizures or forfeitures, and that money is dwindling significantly because Unfortunately, the, the criminals are not stopping in dealing drugs. They're just getting smarter than us. So um, seizures on drugs are going up, but the cash that they're carrying is going down because they're exchanging that money through the Internet, through Bitcoin and other currencies that we're not able to seize right now. So um, in looking at the, the money that we're not being able to receive from PANT this, this fiscal year, which they have always provided um, $125,000 to the center towards our budget, we met with um, Sheriff Masher and um, County Attorney Sheila Polk and talked about how we could make that up. And then we also um, hosted the PANT meeting with all the police chiefs out at our center and gave a tour and talked to them about our needs. And um, that's where we decided that we really needed to go back to each local town and jurisdiction to increase the amount per citizen that we're requesting. In 2018, we gave services to 887 victims. The number um, in the paper I provided you is a little bit off. I think it says 850. But 887 victims, and approximately 100 of those victims came from the Chino Valley area. So we do work very closely with the Chino Valley Police Department, um, and, and they're, they're a wonderful partner and support to us, and we hope that they feel the same way. Thank you so much. Thank you. Where, where are you located? Where are you? We are located on Bob Drive in Prescott Valley. It's actually the old Prescott Valley Library. Oh, okay. Um, so it's kind of centrally located because we do serve the whole county. Our phone number is 928-775-0669. Um, May I, Mr. Mayor? Sure. Um, I, Annie, I did not know that WIFAC uh, existed until someone I knew needed it. 
And um, I can tell anybody, everybody, anyone watching, uh, hands down, most compassionate, amazing people in such a warm, safe environment, late at night. Um, the advocate followed up for months um, and months, just amazing. And I didn't even know you existed. And I'm glad I didn't need to know that, but um, I, think, uh, I think you guys are amazing. And thank you for what you do because I couldn't imagine it. And it, for me personally, it made a huge impact. Huge. So thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad to hear that. Anyone else have questions? questions? We do have a website. Um, yeah. It's www.yfac.org. Oh, we do have a Facebook. Yes. Repeat I'm your phone number, please. 928-775-0669. And we absolutely love to give tours. So um, if anyone would... would be interested in coming to the t center and having a tour and seeing what we do firsthand, we, we would um, really enjoy showing you around. Anybody that would love to come. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. We'll uh, put this on the next agenda. For, uh, okay. Thank you. <coughs> Let's go on to pub call the public. Call the public is an opportunity for the public to address the council on any issue within the jurisdiction of the council that is not on the agenda. Public comment is encouraged. Individuals are limited to speak for three minutes. The total time for call to the public may be up to 30 minutes per meeting. Council action taken as a result of public comment will be limited directing staff to study the matter, scheduling the matter for further consideration, a decision at a later date, or responding to criticism. Is there anyone who would like to speak on that call to the public? Okay, hearing none, we'll go on to response to the public. Response to the public is an opportunity for the mayor to inform the public about how town officials address matters raised during call to the public at a previous meeting. We do not have a response to the public, so we'll go on to item five, which current events, summaries, and reports. This item is for information only. The mayor, any council member, or town manager may present a brief, brief summary our report of current events. If listed below, there may also be a presentation of information requested by the mayor and council and questions may be answered. No action will be taken. Does anyone have any item, anything for current events? Hmm? More listed down below. <laughs> no. no. Okay. Town, town manager. Sure, Mayor. I have a few things I wanted to just bring up tonight besides the list of things that are on here. Uh, first off, uh, this Friday is the town cleanup at the community center. This is our annual cleanup that code compliance has for free drop off um, of anything if you live in the town limits. Uh, the town will also be participating in the home show at uh, Prescott Valley Event Center this weekend. We'll have a booth up there. And uh, the pool opens on May 24th. Schedules are online or at the library, community center, or the senior center. That's it. That's it? Okay, thank you. Let's see, presentation of educational video produced by uh, Arizona's clean elections pertaining to the town's May 21st special election. And who is going to do that? Uh, sure, uh, just for the public's knowledge, uh, Arizona Clean Elections had contacted our clerk's office wanting to do some videos on uh, our upcoming ballot initiatives. Um, so they did them in three parts. We're only going to show one this evening because in total they're about 25 minutes long. Um, but uh, they, I, I want to say uh, to the town's benefit that they said we had a very transparent website when it came to our uh, ballot initiatives, that there was a lot of information compared to other communities when they've done this. So they're uh, a state agency that um, tries to promote um, clean elections, et cetera, et cetera. So they did, they interviewed uh, the mayor, me, our town clerk, and then Frank Marbury. And uh, those uh, videos are now on our website, on Facebook. They've been all over the place. So we're going to just show one of them tonight. Executive Director of the Arizona Citizens Clean Elections Commission. The commission, which was passed by voters in 1998, is 
the state of Arizona's voter education agency. So our job is to help voters connect with the issues and candidates that matter to them. But you know, elections aren't just in big presidential years or gubernatorial years. Elections happen in Arizona in localities throughout the year. And so we're here in the town of Chino Valley to talk about their May 21st election, where voters will be deciding two very important ballot questions. One, related to uh, how to fix the roads here in Chino Valley and how to pay for it. And the other, uh, relating to how uh, authorizing the town to get involved in purchasing water companies and, and why they want to do that. Um, so, uh, you know, it's important that uh, folks be aware of their local elections. They can always check out our website to look for elections around the state. But without further ado, let's talk to Mayor Croft and Town Manager Gridman about these Tanishino Valley issues. Mayor Croft and uh, Town Manager Gridman have you've both been in office about two years now in your, in your respective offices. Uh, tell me a little bit about how you uh, started to develop these two questions, one's about the property tax for roads and one's about acquiring uh, water utilities. When, my, when I was elected mayor and the city was appointed as town manager, we started a process of going out and having meetings with the citizens and asking them what they really like, how, how they like us to spend their money on projects for the town. Probably, there were three, but probably number one was roads. Uh, the roads need to be repaired. Talk to me a little bit about why this is an election that's important for everybody in the town, whether you're for or against these questions. Right. Naturally, when you look at our roads, especially after the last big storm we had, the snowstorm, they're deteriorating. They haven't been repaired in a long time. So we're to the point now that we have to stand up and say, okay, it's time. We have to do it now. We need your support. Do you as citizens want us to fix your roads? But we, to do that, we need the money. We have the staff. We, can, we have the expertise to do that. But we need the money to actually put on the roads themselves. What do you hope to sort of take away from the election? I and mean, when, you, when you get the results, you'll look at if it's been six, if the questions, when two questions have been successful, if they haven't been successful, I mean, is that something you'll then analyze? Or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it will be. Um, we don't have a property tax here in Chino Valley, so this is sort of a um, barometer, I guess, on the community's taste for having additional taxation. And uh, so it's the first time it's ever been proposed by any council in our community to do a property tax. Sure. So, so whether you like it or you don't like it, voting is going to give a set of signal to, to this to city, this town government. Mm -hmm. well, what do you think after election day, if the voters were to approve both questions, would be the next step? So the next step, if they approve both questions, uh, would be first on the um, roads would be to immediately go out for bid for getting our first set of um, chip sealing done and, and road improvements. Um, and then we will look at um, continuing long-term planning on what we're going to do for our roads and improving the road maintenance program. We have it in conceptual form now, but we'll have to firm up some of the, the details from there. Uh, secondly, on the utilities, um, we have had interest from different utility companies to uh, sell their utility companies. And we'll continue down that path on ones that make more sense to us um, if they're still interested. With respect to the water company issue, mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about that. My understanding is that a, a couple of decades ago, voters in Chino Valley were, were eager to let the town get into that business, and there's some potential advantages there. Um, what, what do you see as, as what, what that process looks like? Okay, so water in Chino Valley is very complicated. We're in the Prescott Active Management Area, and I don't think a lot of our citizens, there are, a lot of them are on uh, exempt wells, and I don't think they understand uh, the importance of the utility companies located within our corporate boundaries. We have five different water companies in our corporate boundaries. Uh, they offer us the opportunity from an economic development standpoint to uh, extend maybe utilities to some of our commercial corridor areas so, so that we can have some economic development. Um, some of the other utility companies are more strategically placed and that would allow uh, a cheaper way of delivering economic development as opposed to us running parallel lines through our system. Um, so we, we call, what, what do you think are some of the next steps, say both questions pass, what, what, do you, what do you see as some of I think we're ready to actually start construction on some of the roads. Uh, our uh, town manager, our town uh, engineer, the public works director is already putting together some uh, contract uh, proposals, and we plan to, if it passes, the road passes, 
is where we're going to start uh, start building right away. As far as the water goes, it's kind of a housekeeping thing. We need permission if one of these water systems becomes available that we can purchase it and put it into our system. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, um, uh, um, Mayor or um, uh, Cecilia, what do you see the best way for voters to stay involved and in touch with the town about the details of these questions? Well, we have been doing outreach to the fact we've been doing that's We've been probably about 50 different outreaches. 50 outreach different outreaches. Between radio and... Talking about it. Radio, we, we have our staff talk about it every time we have a council meeting. We have a session on a council meeting because we do have vi videotape. Sure. We are on that TV. Sure. Uh, so... And the town website is a town, town website, Facebook. So we have a lot of social media yeah. interfaces. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for uh, joining me today and having us, having us here. Um, and, and like I said at the beginning, uh, you know, the Elections Commission, uh, like you, you know, really thinks it's valuable for folks to get out and vote regardless of whether they're for or against something or for or against a candidate. You know, these elections have meaningful outcomes for, for communities. And you know, thank, you, thank you for your time. We, we hope our people vote, our citizens vote. That will give us a good indication of where we can go and what we can do in the future. Well, we're not going to quit our day job for Hollywood, I'll tell you that. <laughs> one more week. <laughs> yeah, one more week. Okay. Is, thank you very much. Okay, let's go on. Uh, update from the police department regarding distracted driving, the new state law, and the town's distracted driving ordinance. Chief, you're back again. You love me, Mayor. <laughs> Mayor and Council, as you're aware, uh, recently Governor Ducey signed into law a distracted driving ordinance for the state. Um, I want to thank you because it was through cities and towns and counties passing their own ordinances that pressured the state into actually finally doing something. So we're not the last state to, to pass a distracted driving ordinance, so I think we're the next to the last. <laughs> the, the ordinances are very similar, the state's and the town's ordinance. Um, there's a slightly, ours is slightly more restrictive. They actually allow you at a stoplight to text. I'm not sure how well that's gonna work, but that's what they decided. Mm. Or at a railroad crossing. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't have any of those in Chino. <laughs> but in their infinite wisdom, they added those into their, their statute. And then also, for some reason, they have put off enforcement or actually writing citations until January of 2021. So in the interim, you can write a warning, but not a citation. So what we have decided to do is we are allowed to continue to enforce the town code until that time. But because ours is more restrictive, once that magic date of uh, January 2021 hits, we would no longer be able to cite under our code. So I mentioned this to Mr. McGuire today, and what we think would be the easiest thing to do is in December of 2020, we would just repeal the town one and begin writing this, the state one. Uh, but basically they're the same thing you it's hands-free you cannot text talk or anything you know while holding the phone uh, you are allowed to swipe it off and on that type of thing but very very similar to the town's code so if you have any questions i'd be glad to answer them any questions all right thank you you're welcome e report by council member mike best chair of the 50th anniversary committee regarding committee progress mr best just to go ahead and uh, bring council and uh, our community up to date. We are working very diligently on our uh, 50th anniversary, which is September of 2020. We will recognize it on our Labor Day weekend celebrations, but it's actually September 21, so that's close enough. <laughs> we will, uh, some of the things we are doing is uh, we're writing a book and hopefully it will be out in January. If you have pictures and things that you would like to put in the book, we are doing interviews with some of our older businesses. We are doing interviews with the families here in the town that have been here and helped establish the town. We are uh, doing the schools. Uh, John Schultz very nicely gave us a big box of stuff and pictures to go through. So uh, our, uh, I pick on Will Williams, our editor in chief of writing this book and getting it together. Uh, keeping very busy lately. Uh, some of the other things we are doing is having things for sale. And 
We will have license plates that you can put on your front of your car to go ahead and celebrate our 50th anniversary. There are some already out. They will be on sale widely at the chamber, uh, at town hall, probably after September 2019. So they'll be able to get them. We will have t-shirts, long sleeve, short sleeve, white or black, with uh, one of our license plates on the back. We are gonna go ahead and have a license plate that is uh, more pictorial, showing a sunset of our mountains or water windmill, and they will be up for auction at, on the town website. We are working with uh, Northern Arizona <coughs> Basketball Sons to go ahead and have a couple Chino nights, and they're looking to go ahead and sponsor a three-on-three, -three, so all you basketball players like to get your team together. Uh, next year we will have a uh, tournament of three-on-three, -three, and then the winner will be at the uh, Northern Arizona Suns game. Uh, on Labor Day, some of the things we are looking at are a Friday night street dance for users that remember the ones we used to have. We will have the pancake breakfast, the parade, <laughs> the same as always. We will go ahead and uh, have the craft show, the carnival in the park. We will have the 5 and 10K run for uh, all you athletes. We are also working on a time capsule, which uh, my co-chair, Jack Miller, said he would build uprights in that new place by the uh, library so everybody can see it and it won't get buried and lost and forgotten. <laughs> so uh, we're discussing things that we're gonna put inside the time capsule. And I was told that we would have a lot of things on uh, flash drives and what have you, then I was told it'd be hard to go ahead and today find something that would pr reproduce a floppy disk. So we gotta put something in there that could use the flash drive. <laughs> uh, technology gets way ahead of us and 50 years from now we have no idea what it's gonna be, be up to. So these are some of the things we're doing. Uh, we're very excited about it and we hope you get excited to be uh, part of our 50th anniversary. Thank you, Mayor. Our meetings are monthly at the community center at six o'clock. So the first Wednesday of each month we go over there. Uh, our book was our biggest challenge at the beginning and it's coming along pretty good. We've got it kind of under control. And now we're just looking at the events and things that we can go ahead and uh, do throughout the 2020 year to go ahead and make this party memorable for everybody in every organization. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. <coughs> Questions? I would look real good on my pants. Just start, throw your start bid in. in. Throw your bid in. <laughs> uh, so you'll know on the other license plates, the ones we're gonna auction off, the auction will start at $50 a piece, and whoever gives out the most money will get to pick his number. I just took it for granted he'd want number one. Or hers. I was told that <laughs> they might have a favorite number that wasn't number one. A wedding anniversary, a football jersey number. So whoever bids the highest will get to pick his number and second ones on down will get to pick uh, their favorite number out of what's left. Very cool. Okay, any other questions, comments? Okay, let's move right along. President Kathy, come on up. Presentation and challenge by Kathy Froher for the town employees to participate in the green bag program that was presented during the April 23rd, 2019 call to public. Oh. You may wonder why I'm not standing over there. I'm also the videographer and I just can't be in two places at one time. So I'm standing where Mike was and it's hopefully showing up on the TV screen. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> I wanna start by saying if you didn't notice my t-shirt, please do. It says one town, one team. And that is all of our employees here in town have that motto. We all have the t-shirts. We all like to have them to be able to wear at least once a month. And if not, the HR department reminds us. So um, <laughs> what we're doing right now is we presented um, to the folks in our employ 
um, a green bag challenge. If any of you were at last week's, last month's meeting, um, Abby uh, Daniels presented as um, uh, one of the people that started a hunger challenge uh, to the town of Chino Valley. And she's a high school student here at our town. Uh, we have over 300 uh, students, rather, that have no place to live uh, on a regular basis, and a lot of them are very hungry. Um, so she's taken on at least the hunger part of it. And she gives out green bags, and um, I don't know, I guess you didn't get my slides, but here's my slides. Um, <laughs> they didn't get up on the screen. That's okay. Um, but we dispersed them out to each department in the town. Um, I'll tell you kind of how we did it. We did it based on the number of employees. So the PD back there, um, they've got the most employees of anybody in town, so they've got to fill eight bags. So, and they're pretty good sized green bags, like big shopping bags, uh, the cloth ones. Um, down from there, we go to the public works, roads, maintenance, utilities, those folks, they have five bags they're supposed to fill. Um, all the way down to our courts. The court, yeah, go to the next one if you would. There we go. The courts don't have too many people working over there, so we're only requiring them to fill one bag. Okay, now you may think, well, what's the incentive? Hopefully just their good hearts for the rest of the town. But in case it's not, Cecilia's put up in front of us um, a free pizza lunch to whichever department comes up with the most. So if we're feeding the community, we're gonna feed that department too. So um, that's our challenge. I put on here the gen, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> that's a heavy box, I carried it in. <laughs> I love it. Well, the library <laughs> takes your one bag and uh, re raise it by four. Library has three bags. Four. Three, they've four. already done four. <laughs> I think we'll have to weigh these. I'm not sure about this. <laughs> Anyhow, They're we're heavy. also <laughs> opening it up to the general public. Anybody in the general public that would like to help with this initiative, we won't count it towards the town hall's challenge. <laughs> um, but I did bring in some flyers. They give um, the information that Addie gave us, and it also gives suggested items. But keep in mind that these are kids, too, and she doesn't have really many goodies in here. So if you want to bring a box of cookies or something like that, that's okay too. Uh, but I'll leave them up here on a chair. You're welcome to take one when you leave today and just bring them back to the town hall. Um, our pickup date for her to come and get all of it from town hall for the first month, if you wouldn't mind going back to that first slide. Um, the first month, see we're doing two contest months, May and July. Um, so the one for May, is going to be picked up the first Monday of June. Um, if you get it here after that, we'll just put it aside and save it for July. So feel free to bring in whatever you can. Um, right now they've got macaroni and cheese on sale, two for a dollar at Safeway. <laughs> what kid doesn't like macaroni and cheese? So thank you very much. Any questions? What was you guys are part of the challenge. You yeah, know. How, many, how many bags are, are, is council? Town okay. Hall and Council is supposed to fill four bags. Come on, guys. And we can do that. And this green bag is the appropriate... Oh, I can't even look. <laughs> Holy it's heavy. Um, so this bag is the appropriate size. So it's, it takes quite a few groceries to fill it up. I think we can beat the police department. I think we can. <laughs> I don't know about the library, though. We'll have to see. <laughs> All right. Give it up for the library. It's heavy. And we have extras here, but you can bring in any kind of bag. We'll make sure they get it. Okay, but yes, good point. You probably wouldn't hear that because I'm not there to turn up the microphone. Um, so um, they are available at the district office too if you want to pick them up there. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. All right, let's move on to the consent agenda. All those items listed below are considered to be routine and may be enacted by one motion. Any council member may request to remove an item from the consent agenda to be considered and discussed separately. Do we have anything? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor, item B actually has a mistake in the 
the description. So if you would just have that motion include approval of the contract as presented, that'll cover that for us. Okay. Is there any other discussion? You want to pull any items? All right. Um. I missed what you were supposed okay. to do. I'm item, sorry. Item B. Yeah, item B should be read as approved as read. Or as written. The, uh, approve the contract as presented. Okay. It men mentions in their merit and uh, uh, cost of living increase. Okay. The merit no is not permitted under the contract. Yeah. I'll make a motion we approve consent agenda items A, B, as the contract states, C, and D. All in favor? We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> let's, let's go on to action items. Aye. The council may vote to recess the public meeting and hold an executive session on any item on this agenda pursuant to ARS 3843103A3 for the purpose of discussion or consultation for legal advice with the town attorney. Executive session should not open to the public. No action may be taken in executive session. Let's go to item A, consideration and possible action to approve the Fourth Amendment to accountability contract and scope of service between the town of Chino Valley and Chino Valley Area Chamber of Commerce for fiscal year 1920 in the amount of $60,000 of general support and a match of up to $33,000 for an, if approved, for an Arizona Office of Tourism grant. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, I have not prepared a formal presentation. I'm just going to offer some comments. I think you can see that the uh, Chamber Board is here as well as the Director if you have any additional comments. So what I wanted to mention that this is the fourth year of the same contract, so to speak, that we've had. Um, this is the fourth amendment to that contract. Uh, I've worked with both the chamber president, uh, Wendy McManigal and Lorette in preparing anything that might be different in this contract, which there really isn't anything different except for um, last year we had provided $5,000 for VISTA funding, which was for the volunteer program. They're choosing to do that through their own staff. And um, I suggested that we would, and Wendy provided a letter um, suggesting that they would do it, in, same thing, but in a different fashion. Um, so I was recommending that we would just fund them the $60,000. And if they apply for a grant and get it for the $3,000 of tourism, that that would be included in addition. But that's a maybe. OK, questions? No questions here. Questions? I'm good. No. Can I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion. We approve the Fourth Amendment to the accountability contract and scope of services between the town of Chino Valley and the Chino Valley Area Chamber of Commerce for fiscal year 1920 in the amount of $60,000 of general support and a match up to $3,000 if approved for, the, for an Arizona Office of Tourism grant. Do I second. Have a second. Second. Do I have a motion and a second? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Let's go on to item B. Consideration possible action to approve the accountability contact between the town of Chino Valley and Yavapai Regional Transit, contributing $1,700 to support transporting children from the Paulin area to the Chino Valley Aquatic Center for 2019 swim season. Scott? Evening, Mayor and Council. Um, hard to believe, but it's that time of year again. Summer's just around the corner. Our pool is ready, as uh, Town Manager Gritman said, it opens on uh, May 24th, and uh, we're all ready to go. And with that, it's also that time of year for Paulden Plunge. And with that being said, I would like to introduce Mr. Ron Romley, who will tell you a little bit more about it. Mr. Romley? Thanks, Scott. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Ron Romley. I'm the Chairman of the Board and the founder of the Avapai Regional Transit. I, got, I want to talk to you about two things tonight. Actually, I've only set up for one, but I've got two. Um, every year, the Arizona Transit Association has a conference. We attended it last year uh, in, in Phoenix. And much to our surprise, we, were, we won the award for the Outstanding Rural Transit System of the Year for the State of Arizona. Cool. Thank you. 
it was it was this is the peak this is what we've really been working for for all these past 10 years and all the people that have come and gone and and worked with us and our writers uh, we just we were really appreciative of this award now what I came to talk to you about today basically is the pollen plunge of 2019 I got too many things going here at the desk. Uh, our partners in the Pollen Plunge uh, is the Pollen Foundation, with uh, Terry McPherson and Jane Anderson. Uh, they're basically the ones that do 90% of the work. Last year, they signed up 94 kids before we ever started. This year, they're anticipating at least that many, if not more. They meet the bus at every uh, location that we stop to pick up kids. Uh, what they do is, is they issue the tickets, they make the phone calls when the pool shuts down. It only happened twice last year due to weather, and one time the pool was having a chlorine problem and they shut the pool down. They provide the driver with the, with the telephone numbers of all the kids that are on that bus for that day. So we end up getting a manifest every single day uh, from from the Paulden Plunge. They work very diligently at doing this, and I will tell you, at the end of two months, running five days a week, they are tired. Uh, this is our fifth year that we've been doing the Paulden Plunge. Uh, we have approximately $3,000 in carryover. Uh, YRT is using th about $300 of that um, for new uniform shirts. Uh, we've used the same shirts for the last two years. They were getting a little smelly, so we decided that we would go ahead and uh, get new ones. Uh, so far this year, the sponsored donations uh, for the program is down from last year. But thanks to the Kiwanis Club of Prescott, last year they donated to this program $1,500. They called us about a month ago, six weeks ago, and asked us if we were going to do it again, and we said yes. And they said, we have another check for $1,500 to support this program. So if any of you guys or anybody in the audience know the people uh, from the uh, Kiwanis Club of Prescott, give them a big thanks for us. We already did that, but it's nice if other people hear it. What I'm here tonight for is to ask the town of Chino Valley uh, for a donation of $1,700. You gave us $1,700 last year. We came in real close uh, to that $1,700. And we use that strictly for the bus. Uh, what we do is that helps us with our fuel, that helps us with our oil, that helps us with everything that we have to do. And we use one single bus as dedicated to this program throughout the year. Councilman Mike Best and myself are the two primary drivers. Uh, because we do use trained volunteer drivers. We have three others that are set aside in case something happens between both of us that we can't make it. Uh, they are there uh, to fill in for us. So um, all the volunteers are just that. They're all paid drivers, but for this program, they've agreed to volunteer their time to help us keep the costs down. Uh, this program works for all of us. This program works for all of us. Yavapai Regional Transit and the Paulden Foundation last year was pleased to give the town oh, there it is, $1,182. Uh, that was the swimming pool uh, entry fees that were paid by our sponsorship and uh, to help the kids get into the pool. And I do know a lot of the kids would have never been able to attend that school, uh, that pool, without that help. So we're we're really tickled that uh, we're able to do it again this year. I, I'll tell you, once we got the the Paulden uh, Foundation involved with us, we did it for two years on our own. And believe me, we are a, a transit organization and not a hey, come and help us. Uh, type of organization with the kids out in Paulden. Once they got involved, we went from about 150 kids a year to 400 kids last year. 
and we're looking for at least that amount the same this year. With that being said, we look forward to working with the town again this year, and we thank you to the bottom of our hearts for all the support over the last several years that you have given this transit organization. Do you guys have any questions? No questions, but a comment. I think this is a very fitting program, especially considering that the lady that spearheaded wanting to have a swimming pool for our community, for the children, Miss Ruth Gilpin, yeah. uh, lived in Paulden for in excess of 80 years, was a lovely lady and worked her tail off so that we could have a swimming pool for the children. Terry McPherson is her daughter. So oh, cool. she's carried she's carried it on there. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Also, I'd I'd like to say online that this type of activity for young children is a great thing. Get them out of their house, their daily routine. Get them out among people, and those sunshine, watery days are awesome. They'll never forget the rest of their lives. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? Questions? I make one comment that as a driver for this program, the kids really appreciate it. I mean, they'll see you in the store, they'll see you someplace else, and they'll say, thank you, driver Mike. Thank you, driver Ron. It's just amazing. I like waving as I drive by you <laughs> <laughs> when you're driving all the kids. Okay. Well, thank ready? you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ron. Um, I really want to appreciate, I really want to express my feelings for Scott Bruner. He has been a major supporter of this for a very long time. And he gives us everything that we possibly need as far as the people coming in, talking to them, and doing all kinds of different support. So, Scott, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Make do a motion we, we approve the accountability con Whoa, that's the wrong one. Mm -hmm. Where if it's got I more at? money on it, go ahead and read it. <laughs> <laughs> You're a B. Yeah. Approve the accountability contract between the town of Chino Valley and Yapai Regional Transit, contributing $1,700 to support transporting children from the Paulden area to the Chino Valley Aquatic Center for the 2019 swim season. Second. Second. A couple of seconds. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Nay. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you very, you very much. much. All right. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Thank you, Mayor and Council. <coughs> Excuse me. Presentation, discussion, and possible action regarding a brief summary of the proposed budget for fiscal 2019-2020. Mr. Duffy. John Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. I was hoping Mr. Romley could do the budget presentation tonight. Well, he he did a good to. job. <laughs> he's, been on, he's been on a council before. He may be able to do that. Got you, Mr. Miller. I have a brief, short, 30,000-foot presentation on the budget <laughs> for Mr. Council, Vice Mayor Miller. Um, thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, I just wanted to give you just a quick little recap of what we're looking at. As you know, we have a study session on Tuesday, and I have a packet sort of preliminary prepared that you can take with the information so you give you something to do over the weekend, I'm sure, to look at it. But last year, we budgeted about $24,525,000. We're going to end up spending about 19 million of it this year, and this year's budget we're up to almost 29 million dollars, and a lot of that is we're going to we're planning on doing some pretty good sized capital projects. Some of those we haven't even determined yet, but we're going to allocate put the money or allocate in the budget so that we can do it if council desires to take on a couple of these projects we've been talking about for a couple of years. The general fund this year is going to roll over a balance of about 573,000. And that happens every year because we, we underestimate revenues and we overestimate expenses. We, conserve, we budget very conservatively. So this is basically goes into our reserve balance every year. All the other funds, except for the HERF fund, and that's because we did a lot, as much road work as we can, all of them are positive. And like the water fund, we're positive 75,000. Sewer, 376. That's why we we're able to do the $2 rate decrease on sewer because we saw that. In the capital improvement, that's pretty much at break even. Um, I won't go through all these slides, but I did want to mention that in the general fund, one of the major things that we're going to propose this year is taking about a million and a half dollars and transferring it to the capital improvement fund so that we can do some capital improvements. And I guess in the first meeting in July, the study session, 
we'll discuss staff and council. We'll come up with a list of the proposed projects, big capital, and let you guys decide which ones you want to tackle, which one or, or multiple ones you want to tackle this year. The, um, that still leaves us a reserve, our re minimum required reserve balance is, is $3 million. And we are actually still, even after spending that, almost at $5 million. So our reserve is almost getting double of what we're required to have. So even by spending a million and a half this year, we still have, we're still in very sound financial condition. And the capital improvement fund, of course, this is the, uh, we're gonna budget it, we're gonna have the million and a half coming in, and we just have it as a million and a half spent. We haven't identified these projects yet, so this is something to think about, especially even for um, Tuesday's meeting. Talk, and just, you know, think about some of the projects you might want us to propose and get some pro quotes and dollar figures for. So with that, I'll just, I'll skip the HERF fund and the water fund, and I'll skip the waste sewer fund this evening. Uh, we'll go in this in a lot more depth on the 21st, but that's when we first do our first budget review. Um, on the 28th, council will adopt the tentative budget, and once, and just a reminder, once we set that, we can increase the budget at that point. It really, it sets our ex annual expenditure limitation. We could actually adopt a lower amount, but this, we have, at that point, we have to say this is as much as we can spend in a year. We publish it for two weeks, and then Jen, on June 25th, uh, we convene a special meeting. So with that, that's all I have for this evening. I'd like to pass these out real quick, if I can, and so you can take them with you. Yeah. And, uh, Thank you. Thank kay. you, Jeff. All right. Any <laughs> questions? No, sir. I'm sure we'll have questions as we go further into the budget. Yeah. Mayor, next week we're going to go over this in a little bit more detail during the study session. Good. So. Good. Yep. A lot more detail. No. Any <laughs> other questions or comments? You look very nice tonight. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> it's a launch turn. You said comments. Yeah. Okay. Lonnie, your turn. My you're turn? Up. Yep. You're up, Lon. Yep. Okay. With that, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second, I'll second, second it. it. All in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Money. Did you get a chance to look at that?